if we write down the expression of C0, the f very first carryout in a ripple carryouter using generate propagate logic, then the expression is G0 plus P0 C in. We can start calculating C0 at the very beginning of the operation because G0, P0, and C in are all available at time equals zero. And so C0 can be calculated at time equals zero. Or we can start to calculate it at time equals zero. C1 is equal to G1 plus P1 C0. Now, G1 and P1 are also ready at time equals zero, or at least the setup time after time equals zero, because they are calculated exclusively from A1 and B1. On the other hand, C0 takes some time to calculate, which is why C1 has to wait a little bit before it starts to calculate. It has to wait T carry before it starts to calculate, because one of its inputs is not going to be ready until T carry. On the other hand, we already have the expression of C0, so we can substitute for the expression of C0 in the expression of C1 to get G0 plus P0 into Cn, which simplifies into uh, G1 plus G0 P1 plus P1 P0 Cn. Now, if we look at this new expression of C1, this new expression of C1 this expanded expression of C1 does not contain anything that is not ready at time equals zero. Every single element here is ready at time equals zero. Similarly, if we write down the expression of C2, which is equal to G2 plus P2 into C1, then um, substitute for the expression of C1, we obtained above, we obtain G2 plus P2 G1 plus P2 P1 G0 plus P2, P1, P0 times Cn. Similarly, C3 can be expanded into G3 plus P3, G2 plus P3, P2, G1. So P3, P2, G1 plus P3, P2, P1, G0 plus um, P3, P2, P1, P not C in. So any carry position, the expression for that carry uh, for, for that carry out could be calculated using uh, inputs that are all available at time equal to zero. This could indicate for, uh, uh, that we finally have an adder whose delay does not depend on the uh, number of input bits n. This is because any bit position will start to calculate at time equal to zero. So we finally have an adder whose delay is actually independent of n. This, of course, is um, very misleading, and it's actually completely wrong. And we can tell that it is wrong just by examining these expressions, because we notice that uh, the deeper we go into the adder, the later the uh, carry position, the longer the expression and the more complicated the expression, which means that the gate that will implement uh, this expression will be more complex and therefore its delay will be longer. So, in fact, even though we are not waiting for C1 to finish calculating before we start calculating C2, what we are doing is that we are implicitly recalculating C1 in order to calculate C2. If we look at static CMOS implementations of all these uh, carry positions, uh, then these are the static CMOS gates. And just by looking at the CMOS gate for C2, for example, and uh, comparing it to C0, we immediately notice that uh, the delay for calculating C2 is going to be uh, much larger than the delay for calculating C0. So in fact, if you uh, re, uh, t take another look at the ripple carry adder, uh, the delay increases with a linear order. So uh, the delay has a linear uh, slope. But let's consider what happens to the delay here. Let's compare uh, the delay of C0 and, C, uh, and C2. Um, let's just think, for example, about uh, sizing the gates for uh, resistance equal to the unit inverter. So in this case, we have 2, 2, and 1. For the pull-down network of C0, we have PMOSs of size 4 for the pull-up network. And we can size the rest of the networks uh, the same way using the same uh, kind of reasoning. And let's just think about um, CL at the output node of C0, and CL is going to be equal to uh, 4 
plus uh, 2 plus 1. And for this one, it's going to be 6 plus 1 plus 2 plus 3. And for this one, it's going to be, um, so in this case, we're going to have 12 uh, in the PMOS. And in the NMOS, we're going to have 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. So you might be tempted to think, for example, that the uh, order of delay increases linearly because we have a 4 and a 3 and a 2. But the fact of the matter is it increases quadratically because if you consider at least the pull-down network, the pull-down network has a, uh, an arithmetic progression, which for a very large number of, um, of uh, branches is going to approximate into n squared over 2. So the delay of a look-ahead adder actually increases quadratically with the number of bits. We call this kind of adder look-ahead adder because we are looking ahead in order to calculate the uh, carry position. So just looking at it this way, uh, we might be uh, tempted to conclude that look-ahead adders are useless uh, because their delay increases with an order of n square. And in fact, uh, it seems to me like um, we are doing more effort than we need to do because to calculate C2, we're actually recalculating C1 and recalculating C0. Whereas these would have already finished by the time C2 um, finishes, they would have finished a lot earlier. So why not use their values in order to calculate C2, which returns us back to the idea of uh, the ripple carry adder with uh, linear delay. However, there is some use we can get out of uh, look-ahead adders, especially when implemented using the Manchester carry path. So um, going back to the Manchester carry path, we uh, it, it was basically a bunch of uh, dynamic CMOS gates. So each stage, uh, each state, uh, stage would calculate the value of C0 bar or C bar, C output bar, uh, based on either the carry in uh, being propagated or uh, the carry in being generated using a pull down network. Now, um, when we consider the Manchester carry chain, we considered it with uh, CMOS static buffers in between stages. Uh, this was used basically to cut the RC network that would result from the Manchester carry chain. Uh, and thus reduce the delay growth into uh, linear delay growth instead of uh, quadratic delay growth. But now let's consider the situation where we actually don't use these, um, these static CMOS buffers and instead just connect the stages one after the other this way. Now this has a disadvantage of course because um, if you try to think conceptually about what this looks like then you have the resistance of the past transistors horizontally, and at each node you have a CL, which is composed of drain capacitances of all the connected transistors. So you have an RC network, an RC ladder, and the delay of RC ladders increases quadratically with the number of connected uh, sections or connected pi sections. And so it looks something like this. Now, you don't want quadratic delay because quadratic delay increases real quick. But the good thing about the Manchester carry chain is that it is very, sim very simple. And so it has a low y-intercept. So when you look at the ripple carry adder, uh, there are two things. There's the slope and there's also the y-intercept. So the y-intercept means that um, for very low number of bits, uh, n equal to 0, n equal to 1, n equal to 2. Of course, n equal to 0 and n equal to 1 are trivial cases. But for a small number of bits, uh, the delay will be small. But for a large number of bits, we're talking about 16, 32 bits, 64 bits, the slope is a lot more important. And so let's imagine a uh, an adder, like the Manchester carry chain, which has a small y-intercept because it is a pretty simple uh, network. But it is quadratic. So for large number of bits, it will overtake uh, the ripple carry adder and will overtake it soon for a, a relatively low uh, n. And um, its delay will increase above that of the ripple carry adder real quick so that very quickly it loses any kind of appeal. But for some interval of n, 
the Manchester, Manchester carry chain without intervening buffers, even with its quadratic growth, has some appeal because exactly of its very simplicity that keeps its y-intercept small. So how is this used practically? This is used uh, practically in, in large adders with a very large number of, uh, of bits, in which case um, we divide the adder into um, uh, sections of k bits each, which is very similar to the way we dealt with uh, carry bypass adders and carry save adders. And what's going to happen here is that we will use a look head adder to calculate the carry out from the very last position, and we will use a ripple carry adder to handle uh, the rest of the k bits in terms of sums and carries and everything. So if k is kept, kept small, so k is equal to uh, usually less than 5 bits, then this look ahead adder will be very fast because n is small and therefore we are using the simplicity of the, carry, of the look ahead adder to calculate the very last position real quick. Now this very last position can then be fed into the next k bits, the next block of k bits. This allows this block of k bits to start calculating soon. So we don't have to wait for the outputs from the whole ripple carry adder for the next block of five bits to start calculating. So look ahead adders can be used uh, to speed up uh, large adders um, with a very large number of bits by calculating the carry outs from certain bit positions to allow the adder to start calculating on later bit positions sooner.